Gross vaginitis, hematoma If you try to scare me This vertigo, it makes it hard to pee You know you're headed for a total mental breakdown So ask your doctor If this pill is right for you Ask your doctor If there's something he can do Cause there's something wrong Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Talk of the Town with me, Lynn About Town, Lynn Positon. And I am here today in sunny, warm, beautiful Clearwater, Florida, where WTAN 1340 AM and 106.1 FM broadcast out of. If you guys have ever been in Clearwater and you see that big radio tower, that's us. We are right here right now. And our show, Talk of the Town, is a... Good guys meeting good news, good guys bringing good news, and I am very blessed to have my boss, Patrick Cloudin of Consumer Energy Solutions, sponsor the show each week. We now have a show of an hour, and today I have two guests with me. Uh, we have two good guys, so I'm going to introduce them one at a time. The guy to my right is Neil Fox. Neil is a local now, but he is originally from New York. New York. New York. I didn't know him in New York when I was in New York, but uh, we met here in Clearwater. And Neil stepped up when I was doing one of my crazy big community projects, which was one day I was trying to raise money for Community Learning Center, which is our local tutoring center. And we were like, we needed to get a new roof and we needed all these different things for this building. And I kept saying, oh my God, I have to keep asking the same, you know, guys to write a check. And I thought, I don't want to ask guys for big amounts of money. I want to ask a lot of guys for little amounts of money. How do you do that? And I went, Jerry Lewis Telethon, right? I mean, that's the first thing that came to mind. But how do you do that? You're a girl, you don't know anything, you know, you can't afford TV. And I went, I, I, it's, this can be done, you know, this can be like run on the internet live and broadcast live. And let's say we get someone in Italian singing, well, then we could be live in Italy and that's like their prime time's a different hour, right? Anyway, we pulled it off. And Neil, I was reaching out for talent and Neil came through and we did a whole segment and Honestly, it was a ton of fun. For you, maybe. Come on, it was fun. <laughs> you made a lot of friends. We, Kathy and I got up and we loved his music and we were like dancing. Uh, and you know, no, it, when was, it was great, especially. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Go ahead. I, I'm just thinking of how much I have to censor myself. But yeah, it really was fun. And I, I uh, actually emceed a whole segment you as did? well as performed. And uh, it was surprising that. Uh, you pulled it off as well as you did. It was on for like 30-something hours? Yeah, it was like, it was 40 hours. Jeez. And we had like night crews and we had local businesses that donated food. And um, we had this incredible business called LED Pro. They're live. They're real now. You can use them. That I don't know that they. I would be able to get them now because mm -hmm. they're so big. They do huge events and conventions. And I think... You know, they do big rallies. I know for sure when the Trump rally was here in Tampa, they did all the sound and lighting. And they've just done so many great things. So shout out to Federico Laurenti and his beautiful wife, Catalina, uh, for donating their time and equipment. It made the show perfect. And then we had my friend Colin in IT. He pulled that off. Anyway, I digress. It was a wonderful experience. We raised, I don't know, $15,000, $20,000. And again, it was on a shoestring budget, and we reached out to the schools, and we had like acts from all over come in, and it, it was it was it was beautiful. It was a beautiful it, thing. It was fun. It was awesome. I've had so many people come to me and go, "Can we do it again? Can we do it again?" And I'm like, oh, "I'm still recovering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still recovering." <laughs> it was we, huge, job. We, was did you did you see? I I am seed a lot as well, but mm -hmm. also there was uh, this wonderful lady called Miss Jamie's Farm, and she has this really cute CD and these puppets, and she talks to the kids about healthy food choices and she writes and she she's 
absolutely adorable, like right to the freckles and cowboy hat and guitar and mm. cowboy boots. And she couldn't suddenly come. And she's like, you can do it. I'm like, you want me to be Miss <laughs> Jane? <laughs> oh, my God. So I found a red cowboy hat, and, and I was, like, listening to her songs, and, and I did a whole Miss Jamie's Farm well, segment. I wish now, I was that there. recorded? It is, that is recorded. recorded. <laughs> I think the whole show is somewhere, but we got to put some stuff up on YouTube. Yeah, it, I, it was I missed fun. that, because my, my part of the show was on at midnight. Yeah. So I didn't see anything too much, you know, early in the day. Yeah. But so now, let, let, so while I have you, what was that song we just heard, Ask Your Doctor? What was that all about? Well, basically, it was based on um, these commercials you see, mostly uh, in America now, or mainly in America, where drug companies could uh, advertise directly to the consumer. So you see these commercials for the last few years where they'll say, buy this wonder drug, and then for 28 seconds out of 30 seconds, they list all the side effects, mm. including it'll probably kill you. <laughs> yeah. So, And then after that, they say, so ask your doctor for this wonderful drug. So I thought, what a great idea for a song. And I went and I got a, I actually created the song with um, the verses are uh, side effects, actual side effects. And uh, so I, I made a YouTube video, you know, I animated the uh, pills. That's um, really cute. Singing, they're my, they're my chorus guys. And um, it's basically all these side effects, and at the end, ask your doctor, you know, if this pill is right for you. And it's really catchy. It's like, ask your doctor if this pill is right for you. And you, were in, my, doctor. you were in my chorus during the telecom. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so catchy that it was years ago, and I have not played that in a while. I will play it when I get home, but... Yeah. Uh, I, I remember it very well and fondly. And it's true, you know, um, I was watching one of them and I, I started driving, you know, walking around the house and I said to my husband, I came up with a good one. Oblivia, Oblivia, <laughs> I want to go to Oblivia. <laughs> it's like, you know, and then what is one of the side effects? They'll go, fatal events have been reported. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, a fatal event? Like the guy died, right? Sort of a, <laughs> a little bit it, of a euphemism. Yeah, they make it sound fatal events yeah. have been reported, you yeah. know? Anyway, so yeah, it's Nothing funny. anybody didn't recover from. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't live to tell about it. Right, right. So, and you know, it's here. He with a smile on his face. Yeah. <laughs> he was in oblivion. Yeah. Um, so, Neil, I have a cute little bio for you here. So, uh, I want to talk about Neil. So, I'm going to read a little bit. subject. Neil Fox is a veteran songwriter with a long list of credits as a recording artist for Polydor, RCA, and Columbia Records. Yes, that's what I said, all three of those bills. He had a charted single and top 10 dance club hit. He wrote and produced music for hundreds of commercials and TV promos for NBC, CBS, MTV, and VH1. And I remember them all. You know what? What? I'm too good to be here. <laughs> This little, this little station that you. could. It's the little <laughs> station that could. The little show that could. Come on, it'll be a fond memory like the telethon. <laughs> Okay. Uh, long known for his wit and social commentary, Fox turned to filmmaking to express his views and visuals. He won numerous awards for from film festivals for his music videos, film shorts, and full-length documentary, The Conspiracy Project. He is especially outspoken on psychiatry. Music Connection called his song Zero with a Gun, which links antidepressants to school violence. It's edgy and alternative. So that was a quote from uh, the Music Connection. As a human rights activist, his most recent creation is his animated music video for his song, You Have the Right. It's beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Uh, it is an official selection at many film festivals and won several awards. His latest project is Pure Fun, a YouTube web series called Uncle Neil's Neighborhood, featuring original music, animation, and zany antics. Well, how about that for a bio? I'm impressed. I'm really pat on the back <laughs> official. He's got one. Usually I say original music, original thoughts, original teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured this, this was needed to be a little more elaborate. So now I'm going to take that and go back to a story you told me about your days in New York. So Neil had this amazing talent. He's got a beautiful voice, by the way, Dan. He really does. And um, what did you, you were going in a direction and then you didn't go for it. You turned around. Tell me about that, the, that famous, almost really, really famous kind of thing you were, you were going for. And then you said, no, I don't think I'm doing this. You're talking about my career at Walmarts. 
Because <laughs> <laughs> was... you didn't like the outfit. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was a greeter for about a year. No, actually, uh, well, gee, I had so many. Let me let me make sure I'm zoning in on which part. So it was it was music it was terms. music business, and it was yeah. like there was something about the business that. Well, first I was in the music business in terms of playing in bars and clubs, but then I got into uh, recording. Yes. And I got onto Columbia Records and RCA Records and Polydor Records as a singer-songwriter. And uh, long story short, uh, at Columbia, the day I signed the contract, they fired Clive Davis. So I was at Columbia for three years. Nobody cared because they, anybody who had anything to do with me being there left with Clive. So, you know, it took me a while to get out of my contract. And I explained that whole story very detailed in one of the episodes on Uncle Neil's Neighborhood on my YouTube channel. Oh, good. See, yeah. so I, I that's it's it. A perfect lead in. Um, but then, and I didn't know. And, and also <laughs> then when I was on RCA, um, we did an album and we had great musicians on there and we had a band put together. They were going to put us on the road. Then they fired the president of RCA. Yeah. What's with these record companies? I had nothing to do with it. I know. But uh, so anyway, after that, I, I think what you're talking about is I got into the jingle business. Much, uh, I was going to say to my chagrin. I mean, it, the money was good, but um, I hated it. Yeah. You know, I did uh, 15 years of hating it and um, made some decent bucks. And then I said, well, I'm out of here. You know, I've, I've got some residuals coming in from uh, CBS Evening News with Dan Rather, right? Cold Road, co produced. Okay, how about that? That's pretty well, impressive, yeah. I'd say. Wow. <laughs> but then they fired Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so the residuals went. <laughs> but we never would have him in Clearwater had all these firings not you think happened. You're, you think you're going to have this job after I leave here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you're Dan, you're killing me. You're, you're, you're killing me. Pat Cloudin, I, I promise I'll put holy water on him or something. Man, I can use me. it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, when I finally uh, got out of the jingle business, I decided to start my own record company. And long story short, I got... Uh, you know, I got poor really quick, uh, quickly, I think is the way. And he's like, damn, those jingles weren't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, um, I, I actually wrote a one-man show. Well, I wrote a few musicals and things like that. And I did a one-man show where I put up a big screen um, and uh, did the animation. And I performed and interacted with the animation. And I did this in Hollywood, California. You were like an original Muppet. I... <laughs> <laughs> Animal, you know, bang the drum. All right, yeah, that, that, that'll do. As long as it wasn't, as long as it wasn't the old guys in the, in the balcony. No, 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 no not them. <laughs> anyway, so um, so now you're interacting with animation. So you yeah. got me like going, wow, how's that, how did that go? It was great. It was great. It was um, it was called Pigeonholes. I got a DVD of that available on Amazon. Hey, it's available on Amazon. It's called <laughs> Pigeonholes. Um, and then after that, I started doing a lot more videos. So I would start doing my own music videos. I did one called. <clears throat> the Fed, you've seen, I'm sure. It's an alliteration. I'll tell you, folks, it starts with the letter F. It's about the Federal Reserve and uh, how much we all love them. But what I did was basically I decided to use entertainment to get points across, to mm. get a message across. And that's really been the thing I wanted to do all my life is to how can you tell people serious subjects and actually get them to sit down and listen to it? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a tough thing. So I, I used comedy and animation uh, sometimes the songs are very serious, but a lot of times they're funny. And within five minutes of watching this, <clears throat> the Fed, you'll know what the Federal Reserve really is. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, I've seen it. It's 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 definitely a rude awakening for a lot, but it is done in an entertaining way that you're not bored. One right. and number two, you actually go like, I get that. Yeah, yeah, and and everybody loves when the Supreme Court is dancing. It's awesome. Dance at the end. Oh, that's so. great. I'm telling you, his stuff is really entertaining, and it's it's not like anything you watch every day. So you'll be a fan. Yeah, definitely. you'll be a fan, Dan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you have to now. You're you're uh, you're on tape. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and there's too many firings going on. So you're, you're, we have yeah, these. Right, right, we have to absolutely. build a fan club or something. No, you don't have a job. No, we'll get we'll get to our my videos in a few minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. It won't take, but. This is live, baby. We, we don't know what we're pulling in here. <laughs> well, I, I can't get fired because I'm self-employed. So. There you go. There you and go. I'm a volunteer, so I yeah. think we're all right. We're, we're Tom, we're we got covered. your number, though. <laughs> Tom Spade, look out. You're not covered. 
So, okay, so Uncle Neil, tell us about that program, because I mm. have not, I, I'm being honest, I'm being real, I have not had the time to see it. I've wanted to see it because I am a fan of yours, so I will. Mm -hmm. So tell us what we can look forward to. Better than that, uh, for the folks out there in uh, Radio Land, I'll show them. I'll get into custom right now. Oh, oh. Uh, this, is, this is an amazing transition. Uh, Clip-ons, I Yeah, I'm not it. quite sure. People in radio probably are not going to get this, but okay, now. Where did Neil go? See what I'm know. saying? See what I'm saying? I don't know. There's like, this, I walked in there's there, like this you rock star here. I don't know where Neil was. You would have no idea who I was if I just walked in. <laughs> oh, my God. That's like magic. This is Uncle Neil. And this, this is a, a shirt that's on sale, by the way. <laughs> it's about the Squeegee Brothers. The Squeegee Brothers is a segment in Uncle Neil's neighborhood. They're squeegees. They're from Italy. And uh, <laughs> it's Giuseppe and Maurizio Squeegee. Okay. And it's uh, it's an ongoing adventure with each episode of Uncle Neil's Neighborhood. That's one segment. I, I do some music. I do some uh, wacky, zany stuff. I have a new segment. Um, just just some crazy things. And <laughs> excuse me. But um, it's it's got six episodes so far. I just started this a few months ago. I'm trying to get an episode up there every couple of weeks. Nice. Yeah, and it's anybody wants to have a good ten minutes, you know, put a smile on your face at the beginning. I of love the day. it. I'm smiling now with the squeegee Luigi's over here. <laughs> so 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 what are their names again? I want to say like it's a me Mario, but oh, they look at Giuseppe? them. They really are squeegees, guys. On Maurizio. radio, can't see it. Yeah. Now, Neil, that's a, just a regular cigarette, right? Because we just came from a big drug. Prevention no, conference. No, no, that's a cigarette. He's Italian. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. Is anyone wearing a guinea tea? Uh, no, they're they're squeegees. <laughs> well, they're naked. Uh, I'm, I'm they're not, not wearing anything. They're, not wearing anything. <laughs> they're totally naked. You should see the sex scene. It's it was very hot. <laughs> oh my god, squeegee, squeegee sex. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Do they have to? Do we allowed to say that word? I don't even know. Squeegee. Oh my god, that's too well, funny. Well, they get they come to America. Okay. They, they left to make their fame and fortune. They were living in Italy. And they said goodbye to their mama, and they came to New York because there were a lot of windows, and they figured they'd become very rich and famous in New York. And uh, they got involved with the wrong people, and uh, then they got a record contract, and they did a, an album called The Squeegees Do the Bee Gees. Oh and, uh, my God, that's funny! The yeah, you gotta watch it from the, the Bee Gees. first episode. You gotta watch it from the first episode. It's only about ten minutes each, so you can watch it, you know, when you're in the bathroom. Tragedy. Yeah, well. <laughs> Probably is. <laughs> We're in New York and cleaning windows. Tragedy. <laughs> and there's a Christmas. I think that should be your backup singer. I'm like, I'm like tapped <laughs> we in. Can go on the road. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I could have you and Naomi and uh, one more, one more girl. But you got to dress up like uh, pills. Okay, I can do it. You don't mind? I can do it. I'm, okay. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I got the. I want to do like two colors though. I don't want to be a one color pill. Yeah, the, like white on one hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be Prozac or. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to promote those names. We're going to be. Oh, okay. Okay. And okay. Low Jack. Low Jack. Low Jack for the squeegee. <laughs> yeah. So, what? So let me ask you this. That's a good Uncle one. Neil's neighborhood, right? Oh yeah. God, oh, that's so funny. He wrote a question for me. What color are your eyes? <laughs> okay, you're behind dark glasses, so that that question I'm not asking. Well, wait a minute. Let me transition. Okay, go back to Neil. Back to Neil. This is. We want to bring Neil back. Yay! <laughs> Neil. See now, if I walked into the room now, you would never know I was Uncle Neil. Neil's eyes are blue. Blue. Just so you know. We that's have one awesome. blue that way and one blue that way. <laughs> you know, this is the problem when you've worked in the Catskill Mountains in New York. Um, I don't know how many people out there in the country uh, know I know, this, the Catskills. That's where all the big old-time comedians come from. The big old-time, yep. And I used to play in bands up at the Catskills and uh, back up a lot of the comedians and stuff. And Oh, that's you know, awesome. Like who was, who was your Schoen. favorite? Well, Dick Schoen was great. Buddy Hackett. Oh, he must have been yeah. hysterical. Yeah. Shecky oh, wow. Green, did you ever hear him? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else. There was a lot of people. Uh, when I was 15, I played in a bungalow colony behind a stripper. <laughs> a bungalow colony. First of all, in my life, I've never said the words bungalow and colony together. So, oh, you know, is this a you Catskill a, thing? It's a, Well, I thought it was national until now. I don't know about what kind of club were you at, the bungalow colony? Bung, bungalow colony is, the Catskill Mountains is this area about two hours north of New York City. Yeah. And that's where people go to spend their time, uh, you know, in the summer. They go for, for two Families, months. Families, they pack it up, they go. They, yeah. yeah. And they Sometimes could, the dads would go back to New York to work, and the moms would stay with the kids, and the dads would come. Yeah. Wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. 
<laughs> I was only 15. Honey, I've got to go back to the office now. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to see you go. <laughs> anyway, you know, you'd either, there were hotels up there, and I played in some of the bigger hotels, but bungalow colonies were these little private bungalows, and people would rent them for the whole summer, and they'd stay up there for the whole summer, and their husbands would come up for the weekends. So we'd play in a hotel, and to make some extra money on a Saturday night, we'd go to a bungalow colony. We'd get there 1 o'clock in the morning, people were already rip-roaring drunk. Oh my, but here I was, fun. I was f uh, 15. 15. And at that time, I was playing accordion. Don't tell anybody. Oh. I used to, I played organ after that, after that summer, but I was playing accordion, had a trio, trumpet, accordion, drums, and there was a comedian, actually a ventriloquist, who used to be on Ed Sullivan. Oh my gosh. Ricky Lane, it was his name. And we had to back up the shows at the Spungalow Colony. So, and after him came the stripper. Oh my gosh. Now, I had never seen so a stripper. She came on about 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was 15. I never saw a stripper in my life. And back then it was pretty tame. I mean, you yeah. Know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she. More like risque, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, like burlesque. Yes. But she had music that I had to read and it was piano music and I wasn't used to reading piano music and she was very classy she had her own piano music she wanted yes. to read okay and some of the charts were this long and you had to read it and pull it through you know oh as you're reading oh my god but it wasn't accordion music it was piano music so I had to translate anyway at 15 at unbelievable 15, trying to but here's the thing I'm trying to read the music and five feet in front of me is this lady getting undressed and you're 15. And I'm 15. Keep saying, and you're 15. And so I just made up anything. I didn't read the music. I just played whatever the hell I wanted. Gosh, I mean, that's... there's no way I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and it's probably dark. I mean, it's not like they had you well lit. Yeah. You're outside yeah. and yeah. it's like some kind of bungalow colony thing. No, no this was in, they had a cantina. This was indoors. Okay. But nobody was looking at me anyway, you know. No. no. But uh, she, she, I don't know what happened to her. My father would career. say, you're still wet behind the ears. I was... <laughs> More than that. Neil? Neil? Not going there. Not going, not going there. I'll tell. I'll whisper it to you. Okay, so so on Uncle Neil's colony, so we know about the Squeegee Brothers. Neighborhood. What? Sorry. Not <laughs> it's not my colony. I think you should change it. I think it you better go out and watch colony. the show and then come back I'm still stuck on colony. I'm sorry. It's like, it's it's, like it's, Night of the Living Fungal <laughs> Colony. But these, and these people were all drunk by the time I got there. It was a lot Too of Too crazy. Yeah. Well... We're gonna we're gonna bring this down a notch when I talk to my my friend over here. But we have a couple <laughs> more minutes. So, on Neil, on your segment, how can people? First of all, the easiest way. I mean, obviously, we have some people watching us live on Facebook. We're going to put all the links and stuff in the post. But for those who are driving and stuck in traffic, mm -hmm. and we're the drive time or the park on Courtney Campbell time, um, what? How do they find you? How do they find your YouTube stuff to see the older stuff? Because you got to hear Ask Your Doctor and these other things that I know about. And now, so you're at the mic here. YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Neil F. That's N-E-A-L-F. Okay. And you'll see about... 80 videos there, including a full-length movie that I did called The Conspiracy Project. Which got all those awards. Yeah, yeah. Plus the one on human rights got a bunch of awards also. Nice. Um, and subscribe when you get there. Subscribe and push the little gray bell thingy so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Awesome. And it'll be a big help and I'll love you and give you a big kiss. And the second way you can find me is uh, on my main website, which is um, the real Neil Fox with an A. And uh, dot com. Yeah. The real Neil Fox dot com. N E A L F O X dot com. Ask your doctor if this pill is right for you. Ask your doctor if this. Song